right, welcome back to the Dart language tour. We just finished um, the overview of the built-in types, and now we're going in-depth into numbers. Okay, so Dart numbers come in two flavors. This choice of word, flavors, it's like um, the flavor of ice cream, vanilla or chocolate. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's like there's just two types of, of numbers. You can think of um, these numbers like an int for integer or a double, which is a like a fraction in a number. Uh, they both inherit from a num, N-U-M, uh, class. And we'll show that here in a little bit. Okay. So integer values uh, no larger than 64 bits, depending on the platform. Um, so on native platforms, values can be, well, big numbers, okay? 2 to the 63rd power minus 1. Those are pretty big numbers. Uh, on the web, integer values are represented as uh, JavaScript numbers, okay? So depending on how Dart is used, whether you're, you know, using Flutter to target a, um, a mobile application like Android or iOS, or you're just um, using Dart to, um, to, to like, work in the browser uh, via JavaScript, um, it's going to change how the numbers behave. Um, anyways, th they're big numbers. I don't, I don't do anything with this type of information. Okay, this is just a fun fact for me uh, as someone who's interested in Dart from a Flutter perspective. Um, I also don't really care 64-bit, 32-bit, 8-bit, um, as long as I can have the number I need when I need it, whether it's an ID in a database that's very large, maybe there's, you know, millions, billions of records. Um, can I have an ID that that um, is big enough to do that? It looks like I do. Um, okay, that's, that's the most important thing to me. Uh, a double, again, is, they call it double precision. I don't remember this, this phrase, double precision, when I was learning about fractions or decimals and, and all the math classes I've taken. Um, basically, in my mind, or a floating point, it's just a, um, a fractional number, a number with a decimal. Okay, and let me show you in DartPad. I was doing something a little earlier. Um, so if I have an int, let's call it one, like print one, that's as basic as an integer gets, okay? That's it. It's just like, that's what it is. Okay, double. Um, let's call it 2.4. 2.4. Okay, now let's print 2.4, the name of the... And in fact, we should do this little camel casing. Whoops. You always got to have those semicolons. Hats off to the JavaScript developers who have always used semicolons. Because you don't have to do something different. Okay. So this is all it means. Anytime you have um, an integer, use integer. If you have a double, um, do that. If you don't know what it's going to be, um, you can use num. Okay. So this is some number. Uh, we don't know what it's going to be. Like... Right now, these, these variables are, are set um, to be these values, but if I had 2.4 uh, divided by 1, okay, let's say I'm not good at math. I don't know that that's going to just return 2.4. Uh, let's print some number. Okay, there we go. So I'm printing 1, printing 2.4, and then printing 2.4 divided by 1, which is 2.4. Okay, now I could have said double. And that would also run. It's running, it's running, it's running. Okay, it's done. Uh, if I said integer, I don't think that would work. Okay, yeah, we get an error. Because a double cannot be assigned to a value of int. Okay, so we're just going to be safe. Um, you know, we could turn type checking off uh, and call it dynamic, maybe. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, it figured it out. Um, I see num is probably inherits from object. I don't think there's anything between the num type 
uh, or class an object. Okay, so this is all valid. You can bar it. Um, I could probably maybe const this thing. Is that a thing? No. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, but you can bar it. You can um, numb it like that. Okay, one thing to note about integers and doubles, um, this integer called one, this could actually be a double. We're just not putting 1.0 or however precise this is going to be, okay? That looks like a valid double to me, okay? No matter how precise it is, uh, it's still one. Let me see if I can do one dot without, um, yeah, you can't do that, okay? Because then it thinks, um, this looks like I'm trying to call a method. Like what is what is a method? One dot, for example, to string or something. Let's say an integer, you could do that. Um, I don't know if you can do that actually. Let's find out. Then it's probably gonna break some of this other stuff. <laughs> the value type of string, obviously. Um, so I'd have to change that to a var or to a string specifically, and then it's gonna break stuff down here. Okay, so let's undo that. Um, but what I want to show is I can have a double without the uh, decimal point, um, and it's just one, okay? So that's the thing is that uh, something that looks like an integer can be a double, uh, but something that is a double cannot be an integer, okay? And then they both inherit from num uh, integers and doubles, okay? It says both int and double are subtypes of num. Awesome, thank you very much. The num type includes basic operators, plus, minus, divide, and multiply. And it's where you'll find these methods, like absolute, absolute value, ceiling, floor, uh, among other methods. And let's just take a look at one of these. So let's say, um, Okay, look at that. We've got a ceiling method. Okay, that returns an integer, right? So let's say we don't know what ceiling's gonna do. Let's call it a num. All right, now it, it rounds up to three. Okay, that's the ceiling. Uh, let's floor it. Okay, that was one of the other things, right? Floor, uh, and then in a second we'll do absolute value. So that should be two. There we go. And then ABS. It's kind of interesting because like the absolute value of 2.4 is 2.4. Now, if you have negative 2.4 and take the absolute value, it's still going to be 2.4. Run, run, run. Actually, okay, it didn't like that. Why didn't it like that? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem to, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, is there something wrong with not having this this number um, minus 2.4 in parentheses? In my mind, if I'm the compiler, I'm like, I don't really know how to handle that. But once you put it in parentheses, maybe it typecasts it or something. But usually I'm accustomed to passing a value to a function um, where you would have something like minus 2.4 inside this, but there's there's no caller. You know, like what what is this ABS method being called on? Nothing. Um, yeah, so we just saw that you have to wrap it in a little parentheses to use that. Okay, so we're not going into depth about that though, but the important thing is like, if you're looking up where is this defined? Where are these methods defined? It's in the num class. We'll just click on this real quick and see if we can find it here. We should, they just told us, yep, here's the methods. Absolute value of a number. Okay, and then here's the, um, here's where they talk about it, but don't show you how it's actually used. <coughs> Excuse me. No examples. Okay, that's why I'm here. Hopefully I can help. All right. Bitwise operators, um, they're defined in the int class because 
you can't do bitwise stuff with um, fractional or decimal type numbers. Um, I, for my perspective, uh, doing Flutter web apps, um, I don't really care about bitwise operators. Never had a need to use them. If you're doing other fancy hardcore language stuff, maybe you need them. Um, just know that that's where they live is in the int class. Okay, if num and its subtypes don't have what you're looking for, the Dart math library might. So we saw that um, the num class had things like ceiling and floor. Uh, it's probably like the, the more common, what you would call the, this, the, the core library methods. Um, so like in Ruby, we have the core library and the standard library. Um, this Dart math looks like it's more like a standard library kind of thing. And it probably has other functions you can use, yeah. Signs, square roots, all that jazz. Okay. Cool. So integers are numbers without a decimal point. That's a pretty good definition. Integers are numbers without a decimal point. That's great. Um, and here's some integer literals. Okay. This is the integer variable. This is the variable. This is the variable. The thing on the right is just called an integer literal. Um, I think the only place you'll ever see them use the word literal is in the documentation because I, I don't really use that in the real world. Um, okay, so this is what we did earlier. We defined uh, what really looks like an integer, uh, but I guess this sort of hex thing can evaluate to an integer as well. Let's find out. So I'm going to go to here. Okay, we've got ourselves a hex value. Now let's print hex. Just make sure that works. Run, run, run. There it is. Big number. Is it an integer? Yes, it is. Is it a number? Yes, it will be a number. But is it a double? Well, all integers can be doubles. Let's find out. This one's a little fancy, so I'm not so sure. It is. Very good. Uh, how about an exponent? Okay. Let's do this. Get rid of that. And exponent. Okay. So there's this little exponent thing. Let's make sure that works. It's defined as a var. Is it also an int? Because it evaluates. Holy moly, look at that. That is unexpected. A value of type double can't be assigned to a variable of type int. How interesting. Huh. Integers are numbers that are decimal. Here's some integer literals. So this exponent, though, for some reason, it does not like. Now, I was trying to compile to JavaScript. Maybe there's a problem there specifically, as we're getting kind of like the JavaScript flavor of Dart um, compiling. OK. Now, it said it's a double, so it's probably also a num. Let's just be safe and run it and see what that looks like. That's totally weird. That is so weird. OK. Um, yeah, I wonder if there's an issue with that. It doesn't pick it. No, it does pick it up in the analyzer, too. Can be assigned to a value of int. So let's just say dart exponent. And then, oops, let's run it so I can actually copy the error message. OK, there's my error message. Let's say dart int. Just like that. No, I, I wanted to say exponent, right? Uh, it must include exponent. That's what I'm looking for, buddy. Float double values. Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of an issue. So maybe I'll open a, um, a Stack Overflow article specifically about that. OK. We'll find out later. So we're going to table this. Now if the number includes a decimal, it's a double. 
Okay. Remember, the integers can be a double. <laughs> Apparently, this one has to be. Uh, if another number includes a decimal, it's a double. Here's some examples defining double literals. Um, so we did this one earlier, 1.1. 1 .1. That's definitely looks like a um, literal, sorry, and a double. But let's take uh, this exponents or exponents with an S. Okay, var is good for that one. It's running, it's running, it's running. Maybe because I'm downloading Xcode, running slow. Any day now, buddy. I know math is hard, but you're a computer. Okay, well, that's thinking. Okay, you can also declare a variable as a num. This is something we've been doing. I've been showing that. Changing int to num, for instance, it's still valid because num is the parent of int. Okay. And they're showing that because we've declared it a num instead of just an int, it, uh, this works. This would also work if this were a double. Um, I think. I don't know anything anymore, apparently. Okay, so there's that. Um, that actually resolves to what looks like an integer. Um, it's in the double section. The last integer failed. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's the same kind of like problem. Exponents evaluating two doubles. <clears throat> okay, this next one, let's just verify that that's going to work because I have to question everything now. Okay, and then I want to print x so we can see it. Okay, 1 plus 3.5, there we go. Okay, if they made this a double, it would still work. Okay, done running, 3.5. If we made it an int, it'd be like, whoa, you can't add an integer and a double. We're not going to just automatically try to figure it out for you. Other um, other pro programming languages can do that. They'll, they'll just assume, like, hey, we'll do what we can. I um, guess it's kind of nice sometimes, but it's also kind of sloppy. Uh, so here we're being more exact. Integer literals are automatically converted doubles when necessary. Okay, we showed this. All integers can be a double, but not all doubles can be integers. Okay. And it says here's how you turn a string into a number, or vice versa. So earlier, so one uh, in dot parse. Okay. So for example. Let's suppose you have, we'll just break this first example down. It's actually pretty important stuff here. Okay. In the real world, you might make an API call to some website. Um, basically, your program, your mobile app, needs some, uh, let's say, some weather data. And you're like, I want to build a weather app. I need to go to this website and bring back some data in a JSON format. Um, so that JSON format, let's say it has, for example, it's gonna have like a lot of different like latitude and longitude keys, but maybe it, it looks something like that. Like, here's your latitude. Now that, it comes back as a string. You need to parse this string into an integer, okay? I don't know if that's a real what latitude actually looks like. Um, but it's just an example of like, how would you actually get like a string value of, of a number? Um, and that's because you're dealing with dirty data from the real world. You need to sanitize it. You need to parse it and make it um, uh, fit your application. So I want to show what does it mean to parse something? Um, parse definition in programming. It's actually kind of funny because um, 
if you look at the first stack overflow hit, they're going to say it's opinion based and it, you know, they've shut it down basically. Um, but what is parsing in terms that a new programmer would understand? And the accepted answer, the one that's voted the most, I think, says it's the process of turning some kind of data into another kind of data. String into an integer. Great. That fits our use case. Um, some people disagree. Um, other people say it's not exactly that. It's not transforming one thing into another, and they even put it in bold. Um, it might have different language uh, definitions based on like how it's used in the language. Um, yeah, extracting meaning. Yeah. Anyways, it's hotly contested. So the important bit is though is like you need it as an integer in your program. So get it from from um, the web somewhere. That's where you might actually like have like real kind of dirty data. So for example, here's the string one. Now int, I'm just gonna type this out, okay? So let's say I need one, now int dot, now here's my IntelliSense or whatever it's called. Um, try parse, that's interesting. Uh, but it has this built-in one of three methods uh, called parse. Okay, and this is where you can parse your strings. And it makes it an integer. And now we can print one, and I comment this assert thing out. We'll talk about that in a sec. Okay, and then uh, there's that. Um, if you just brought in um, one, two, three string from the web and wanted to use it in your program, you could, right, as a variable. Um, but if you were being strict, this wouldn't work anymore. Um, you would have to say dot parse some string, like so, run it, um, and I think that would work. Okay, let me see, before I move on, in the Dart documentation, there's this thing called assert, okay, and for the life of me, I couldn't figure this out. <laughs> it's like, what, is this something I use in a test file when I'm testing the code that I write? You know, where you make assertions and you expect your code to fail or pass based on if those assertions meet your expectations. Um, apparently, so I, I found this uh, Dart for Absolute Beginners. There's this little section about assert. Okay. Um, if you assert something to be true and it is not, then your program is supposed to spit out an assertion error and stop. It should not execute anything more. Um, it's kind of like in um, so in Ruby, in, in, in a file that I don't want to run, I would do something like this at the top of my file. I would say like raise a runtime error, um, maybe with some kind of message that I want, and I would say if you know some condition false or true or whatever. You know, if some condition is true, if I satisfy this condition that is raisable, then I want to raise an error. That way, if it's ever true, it just barfs in like the rest of the program doesn't run. Um, it seems like in, in, in Dart, um, and maybe in Flutter in debug mode, you'll have to read more about it itself. This whole assert business, it like, it doesn't do anything in DartPad. So if you're going through the docs and, and trying this stuff out, um, okay, right now one is going to be equal to the integer, one, two, three, right? We just proved that when we printed it over here. Um, if I say assert, okay, one, two, three is equal to one, like that's false. The program should barf, but it still prints it out. Like it's still going to finish and, and print over there. Like I could literally just assert false itself and it doesn't do anything. So in my mind, I'm like, what? what is the point of having these assert statements? <laughs> I guess it's just like this little way to, to test something. But um, like, I'm an experienced programmer. And like I looked at this, and I was like, how do I use this? And then even 
um, you know, I found out that it doesn't work here. Um, I don't think there's any way to turn it on. There's a format thing. That's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, there's there's really no way. Um, I found this open issue that was started in 2015 about um, enable asserts mode. And you can see that somebody was like, hey, it'd be great if this was turned on so we can use these asserts. Um, I don't know if the original intention was about DartPad, but like here it is in DartPad, right? DartLang, this is the DartPad repository. <laughs> and, and people are talking about, um, there's even the, uh, the Flutter dude, um, I forget his name, Philip, yeah, where he's like, yeah, this would be a nice thing to do in a code lab, but uh, it doesn't work. So it's surprising that you can't use the certs. Maybe they'll um, they'll fix that and they'll close this issue, but I want to point out that it is an open issue. Okie doke. Right. Okay. I'm going to close that. We're done talking about that. The certs. Okay. Um, so this... Next example, this is just like the integer, except now we have a double. We're parsing a string, 1.1, and we're expecting or asserting that this variable should equal this uh, numeric value, this double value, uh, this double literal of 1.1. Okay. Now, this next one is something that we should point out as well. Um, format. Look, it does it for me. How cool. Okay. Now, previously, you had, like, um, you had an int dot parse, and you could put in, you know, uh, your number like that, your string. Um, but here, we didn't do that. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't say string dot parse. There's no such thing. Okay, from car code, from car codes, from environment. So, so we don't have that. So for whatever reason, they decided let's do it a little bit different. I don't know why. Just know that when you have one dot, look, you have all these methods. Look, there's our absolute, there's um, absolute value, our ceiling, there's our floor. Uh, remember those come from the num class, they return integers. I think we saw that, right? Uh, to string is just another method on that that integer. How cool is that? Um, okay, so it should be the string one. Um, I mean, we can print it one as string. It's gonna print, this is not gonna do anything because asserts don't work in DartPad. We get one. We can't really tell that it's a string. You know, it looks like a, um, can you say type? Is that a thing? Dot something. How do you do this in Dart? How do you get the type of the class? Uh, how do you do that? I'm tired of not knowing that. Um, dart get class of object runtime type ah is is that a thing I can use oops where am I boom boom um, is string if it's a string, it's going to print true. Look at that. How awesome is that? Is it still an integer? Did the two string operation work? False. It is not. Okay. So let's take a little detour because that's actually a good use case. Remember, there's a previous video we went over these keywords. Here, I'll just click on it and make it easier. There's a little dude called is. Check that out. Now, is. It looks like a type test operator. Okay, that's where we are. As is and is bang. Uh, 
that's pretty awesome. So this is, you can read this as is not. Um, cool. Employee is a person. Ah, so in, in Ruby, we have um, is a, right? Don't we have that in Ruby? Yeah. Instance of or is a kind of is a instance of. Yeah, so it's a similar concept in, in Ruby. Um, is that int? Is an int? Is int. Okay. Good. So we've seen is in the wild. It's fantastic. Um, where was I? Back to numbers. Okay. String. Um, so yeah, if you take a double and you convert it to a string, it's like, do I do the whole thing? Um, I bet it would do the whole thing. But if you wanted to truncate some lines, you give it the number um, two string is fixed. Uh, so that's that's a, a different method entirely from two string. I don't know that two string takes any arguments. I think it might just be a pure function as they call it. Um, okay. Yeah, let's keep going. All right, bitwise stuff again. It's not something I'm interested in. I have no idea what this means, but I just know it like produces these integers, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm not going to concern myself with anything more than that. All right, literal numbers are compile time constants. These are the literal numbers. Now, they, they say literal numbers here. Does it also mean number literals are compile time constants or literal numbers are compile time constants? Um, I don't know if those are the same thing exactly in programming speak. Many arithmetic expressions are also compile time constants as long as their operands are compile time constants that evaluate to numbers. Okay, so, so me coming from the Ruby language, um, I don't really have to ever think about like what's runtime and what's compile time really. Um, but here in Dartland, I think we do have to think about um, the behavior uh, or the functionality of the language um, when it's being compiled and when it runs. That's something that's a little bit different. Let's just uh, copy and paste these and run them. Nice little format button there because pasting is hard. Okay, uh, it says that's not being used. Maybe we can use it until retry. Okay, yeah, so we just multiplied 1,000 times 5. Um, you'll notice these aren't integers. So as soon as I change 1 to int, constant variables must be initialized with a constant value. Okay, so this is defined as a constant. Like this variable here, this bucket, uh, that's going to hold some data. We've said it's a constant, but it doesn't know that this is going to be a constant, that this is going to satisfy, I guess, whatever contract it has. Um, try to initialize it to be a constant expression. I don't know what that means yet. If we change everything to int, I think it'll be fine. Okay. Now these could evaluate two integers um, during the program. Like for, for right now, they're just like number literals, right? Um, can I use a const this way? I think I can, okay. So int here, ms until retry, milliseconds until retry. Um, we haven't specified that it's a compile time constant. But as soon as we do, now we're constrained we can't use these integer types. Um, we can use, I don't think, can you do that? Yeah, so it looks like you can do this. You can say it's a constant and here's the type. So this is, this is kind of like var, you know what I mean? Um, 
So under the hood, well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's like var int. Is that a thing? No. You can't do both. Yeah, you see what it says here? Variables can't be declared using both var and a type name. Um, but you can use const. And that, what if I said final int? Is that okay? No, that's a runtime constant is how I understand that. Um, but this is, is this is not a compile time constant. If I said late, I'm like, just trust me on this one. It's going to be a constant. Still can't do it. Okay. Now let's change the, the type. Now remember, a thousand can be a double. That works. Um, can be a num. But it cannot be a string. Okay. And as I say, two string. Okay. That's true. But I guess a method invocation is not a constant expression. So to string is not something that can fit the definition of a constant when it's calculated. Because I guess it doesn't know like how this is always going to turn out or like what's going to be fed to it as the caller. Hmm. It's interesting. OK. So be aware of that how, how, uh, when you use const and how it compiles. OK. That's it on numbers. Um, so we are in the tour section. The next thing it says for more information, see numbers in Dart. Now if I click on this, OK, we were just in the tour. Look, inside of, OK, this language tab here, right, all of this, these are our subsections. Numbers gets its own little page, not little page. You have representation, behavior, precision, identity, types, bitwise, string representation. Um, fancy little chart, okay, how it works depending on what uh, platform you're targeting. Okay, so this, maybe we'll go into this in, in some depth in a, in a future little episode, but for now, um, we are going to stop on the built-in type for numbers, okay? Uh, so just to recap, you have two types, two flavors, int and double. They both inherit from num. Um, some things are defined on num. Other things, uh, like the bitwise operators, are defined on the int. Um, all integers can be a double, but not all doubles can be in, not all, uh, no doubles can be integers, <laughs> okay? Um, this exponent uh, lied to us. It is not an integer. It expects to be a double type along with this one, even though they return integers. Um, maybe it just treats that 8 as an 8 dot something so that it can do exponent math or whatever, how they've decided to program it. That's my best guess, um, so be aware of that. Um, what else? Was I going to make that a stack overflow? Maybe. Yep. And also, when you see these asserts, they don't work in DARPAD at the moment. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. See you next time.